Hey, Jim Ramley here with E Real Estate Coach. I am honored to have uh, Stephanie Linda Mood here with us, and she is from GlamGirlBoss.com, but also an incredible rock star realtor out in Texas. And so I was very fortunate to be on her podcast uh, not too long ago. And so I invited her on our podcast, and she's just going to share a bunch of amazing information with us. Thank you for being on the show. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited. Yes. And so in talking, I always like to just start off with give us a little bit of a background, like a little backstory on you, where you came from, what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. So my career started back in 05 in new home sales. So I got into real estate super early on, right out of college and did that for a while. And then during the recession, I got into IT sales. I did a little bit of retail management and wardrobing. And then ultimately knew I wanted to get back into real estate. And so I got my license back in 2013, got on the side of real estate in 2014 and haven't looked back since. So now what I do is I specifically specialize as a listing agent. So some people might think it sounds really weird. I've actually never worked with a buyer. Really? I've never shown property. I've never had an open house. I've never done any of that. So think of it like, I'm a heart surgeon versus just a general practitioner, if you will. Right. So really? in real estate, a lot of times we think, oh, we have to do everything. But if you look at other careers and other professions, like my dad's a patent attorney, he mm -hmm. never has practiced like regular law or divorce law or anything like that. Right. right. He knew from the get go, he wanted to be specialized. So that's what I do. That's what I specialize in. And then I kind of, I've got a podcast and branding and all that around that. So it's I kind of a it. lot, but so I love you, it. <laughs> when we talked last time and, and I was on your show, you, we, we have to talking about, our, you know, success, of course, and you've had so much success as being a, a massively strong listing agent. And I think you said in one of your first years, 141 listings out of the gate, incredible yeah. number. Um, but I always love it to talk to people at your level um, because I, I, when you're coaching, you talk to agents that are struggling with 10, you know, they're struggling with five and they're struggling sure. with 20. Like, how do you, how do you systemize and organize your business to that level? I mean, what is, I know that's a lot. That's a lot yeah, yeah, that's right a there, big but, question. Yeah, it's a big yeah. question, but like, just give us a few ideas. Sure. We'll and I get, I can get in the weeds really quick. So feel right. free to pull me we out. Love the weeds, I, so as far as I can, go. Yeah. I love giving tangible tactical. So love it. What I'll tell you is, you know, real estate cyclical. So I wish, and, and my husband does for his sanity because of the way I operate, I wish everything was linear, right? So in my yeah. mind, if I've been in real estate for five years versus three, I should be doing more deals in the fifth year than the third year, right? right. But it's, it's, real estate's more like the weather, right? So mm. sometimes we have hot summers in Texas, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we have cold winters we, and sometimes we don't. So in 2014, when I got in, I basically went on like, a hundred listing appointments pro bono, right? I was wow. training, right? Wow. And that wow. was awesome. But when 2015 started, the market was just super hot. Everyone that had gone through the recession that was underwater now realized they had equity. It was time to get out. People were feeling confident. So it was kind of like the perfect storm. So I had great training. I, I, I mean, I still was learning, but yeah. the market was on fire. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so that was the year I did 141. Wow. So in March, right, I, it was my first time I had ever done like over 25 listings in a month. And mm -hmm. I was like, what, how am I going to do this? Because even though, yes, we have technology, I was still handwriting contracts and I was still sure. doing a lot of that by hand. And so mm -hmm. what I came up with was like the first thing that needs to happen is we have to go paperless. Like I yeah. cannot be coming home. What would happen was I'd go to a listing appointment. A listing appointment for me is about two hours long by the time you tour and do everything, sure. talk to the client, have them sign paperwork. And so basically I would get home and then what would I do? I would scan every file to my office because the way wow. we're segmented out, I, I focused on the sales side and then I would communicate everything to my team and then they would help me from an administrative standpoint. So sure. I was still 10, 11 o'clock at night, just scanning files, sending emails, letting my stager know X, letting my photographer know Y letting my transaction manager know these little idiosyncrasies about the house or the yeah. client. So it got to a point where it was like, okay, how do we make this paperless so that when I leave the list, my goal was when I leave the listing, everybody has what they need. It's done. They don't have to yeah. wait on me to get home. Nothing. So basically I started about a 12 to 18 month process mm -hmm. of research with technology and just figuring out what needs to happen to start this process. So one of those things was just getting the contract documents Mm -hmm. into an electronic signature software system, which probably sounds pretty normal, but in real estate, it's not. We don't have a lot of systems and standards other than just 
our MLS compliance, if you will. Right. So for us, I think the, I think the tool at the time was dot loop. And that, that's mm -hmm. mainly because I'm a Keller Williams agent that I think at the time that was what they mainly use. You can yeah. use DocuSign, you can use zip forms, you can use it, whatever you choose, mm -hmm. but we really got it where it was in Dialed. electronic. And at yeah. first my clients, I thought, you know, would they like that? Because right. I was comfortable presenting the contract to them. Like I did new home sales, belly to belly with the paper, you know, line yeah, by line going job. through everything. Yeah. And I thought at first, if they would be like, even if I sat there with them and did in-person signing, mm -hmm. would they like that approach? Especially my older clients that maybe felt more comfortable with paper. Frankly, yeah. everybody loved it. They were like, I don't have to write my signature. Like for them, it was great because when I would leave, I couldn't make a copy for them. So right. when, actually when I leave now, I just tell them, look, as soon as you're done signing and I sit there while they sign um, and kind of go through the high points with them. But I just say, look, you're getting a copy of everything. So if you can't sleep tonight, believe me, this will help you, <laughs> <laughs> but you can go right. word for word through everything. But, but I go over the high points, but that was one of the first things I did was going paperless. And then I started working on automation and workflows using a tool called Zapier. I call it Zapier, but it's called Zapier. And using what's called Zaps, where you can yeah. really start triggering your workflows. So like give you an example. If someone calls me and I set up a listing appointment for them, sure. I will pull up an electronic form and I use JotForm. I'll pull up an electronic form, put in their contact information, the address, date of the listing appointment, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when as soon as I hit submit, it will send off a series of events. It will send the client a calendar invite. It will send them a pre-written email from me that tells them what to expect during the listing appointment, what to have ready for me. It will send a text message to them confirming from my cell phone number. So they have my contact in their phone wow. again. Wow. And then same thing when I have a listing appointment, it creates a Trello card for me. So mm -hmm. it allows me to really tie in. So like if someone says to me, Hey, how many listing appointments did you have last month? Mm -hmm. I don't have to go off memory. I go to my spreadsheet because it logged every single appointment. So there's a million things I, you can do with it, which is mm -hmm. great and bad. Yeah. But if you just focus on what is bogging you down in your business mm -hmm. and figuring out how to piece by piece start automating or making those things paperless, it will yeah. save you a lot of time. So to answer your question, that's how, I mean, that's one of the areas. The other area was time blocking, right? Is figuring yeah. out your daily and weekly schedule of what needs to happen when, and what I will tell you just in managing the load of that many clients, mm -hmm. you have to, in my opinion, you have to have some standards and processes. So like one standard for me has always been, I always go active with my clients on Fridays. Mm -hmm. Really, there's no exception for that. Sometimes we'll go active on a Thursday if we have like over seven or eight going active on Friday, just for my yeah. team, for the workload, right. or if it's a random holiday or something. But usually what we do is go active on Fridays. And the reason we do that is because it then helps time block our weekend. Okay, when do photos need to happen by? Mm -hmm. Versus when does the courier need to go out and deliver signs and lock boxes? Versus if everything's happening on random days, there's no consistency to the business. So right. you're calling sellers on Monday that are going active. Then you're calling them on Friday. So I take two days off during the week. I know mm -hmm. that sounds crazy in real estate. I actually take days off. I do not answer my phone. <laughs> there is a message on there. I have an email autoresponder and, and I work nights and weekends, right? Sure, sure. My husband's in new home sales, so we're off during the week. But so then I have a, a set schedule. Like I call my sellers on, usually I call them on Tuesdays if we mm -hmm. need a price reduce. And then I follow back up with them on Friday. Like today, I've already had my, today is Friday. I've already had my calls for yep. anybody that needs to do a reset for the weekend. Or like I have one listing that we needed to talk about some things before the weekend. That happens Friday morning. Mm -hmm. Versus me thinking, oh, I need to do this. I need to do that on random days. Sure. Everyone's kind of, and it's not like so hand approach, like cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. We will make exceptions if we need to. But yeah. very rarely do we need to. Because right. Statistics show, studies show that listings go active on a Friday, have a higher likelihood of getting more traffic over the weekend because they're a fresh listing for the weekend, blah, yep. blah, blah. And so we use a lot of that to our advantage on it makes sense for the client, it makes sense for the business. And then we can then have our vendors or our partners that we work with in line. So that helps as well because otherwise getting up every day, real estate's already pretty reactive. So mm -hmm. if we can be proactive and have certain things I do on certain days, then that helps organize the schedule as well. Right. Yeah. So let's uh, let's dive into the weeds a little bit here. So yeah. th you just I mean, I wrote down five pieces of technology just really fast that you just <laughs> you just blew out us right there. Fantastic. Really. I mean, it's <laughs> incredible. Uh, but let's, I mean, for the for the for the agents that's just going, wow, she just laid out this incredible 
kind of tech suite that she's implementing. But let's go, let's go back to the going paperless, which was your first step in this process. Yep. When you're coming into the, the, uh, the meeting with your client, you, you sold them, they're ready to sign. Are you now doing that with like an iPad or, and you're sending that document after you leave? Are you doing it right while you're there? How do you? Sure. Great question. So basically I'll give you the nitty gritty and this yes. is going to date myself a little bit. Okay? <laughs> okay. When I started taking listings, the iPhones, the phones of the world, the hotspots weren't that great. What's right. the worst thing that happens when you go to a, someone's house and you need Wi-Fi connection? You're mm -hmm. like, Hey, what's your Wi-Fi password? And they look at you like a deer in the headlights. Like, I have no idea where that 20 digit letter thing is. And then yeah. they spend 30 minutes looking for it. And you're like, I got to go. Right. You know, I budgeted two hours. So what I wanted to do was make it to where I wasn't dependent on the seller for anything like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I literally had my own little hotspot that I would carry with me to every listing appointment. Now, this. like <laughs> as of a month ago, that mm -hmm. thing crapped out after seven years. My new phone is a better hotspot. So yeah. I use my Wi-Fi. That's a big deal though, because it, I'll tell you why in a second. So I had a hotspot. Then I had my laptop and I have an iPad. And mm -hmm. what I do is when I come in, I put my stuff down. I do have one piece of paper. One, my one piece of paper is my notes page that I will write on before I go to the listing to, to take notes on their house or square footage. I believe in doing my research before I get to their home. It's not mm -hmm. fair to them if I don't. Plus yeah. I need to process without emotion the, the, the paper, the black and white on paper. Yes, if I get there and it's way better than the paper says, great. Sometimes I get there and it's worse, right? So yeah. I need to have an objective view and spend time looking because some things aren't cookie cutter in these neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So I have one piece of paper I write all of that on. That's the only thing I write on. And right. then I get there, we do a tour, I write notes on that piece of paper, sit down, talk about their goals, talk about what's bothering them, get all of that out on paper. Mm -hmm. And then I do my li listing presentation. And what I do is I open up my iPad. In my iPad, I have my PowerPoint on there. You can use slides, whatever. And I go through a quick little presentation every single time. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a past client, I go How through many? every single time. Let's uh -huh. talk about that really quickly. Yep. How many slides are in your presentation? Probably 10. Okay. So, so it's like quick. an intro slide. Oh yeah. It's probably like 10 minutes. And basically okay. it's, it's not details. It, it, it's for a couple of reasons. This is show validity. So if I'm a D magazine, five time award winner, blah, 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 it'll show that on one slide from the standpoint of they need it. Come on. We're a dime a dozen, right? Yeah, like right. there are, are in our very low barrier to entry. They need to know that they're working with someone that's credible. I explained well, to them the marketing, which is important because not a lot of agents do the professional staging and professional photos. They use their iPhone, which is not how we merchandise homes to get top dollar. Yeah. I explained that to them. We talk about days on market. We talk about timeline. We talk about how we're managing their listing on a weekly basis because mm -hmm. a lot of my business comes from some of it, not a lot, but a majority of it. I'd say about 50, 50 made it's like realist from the standpoint of they've gotten with an agent. It wasn't successful. Then they find out about us. So yep. I have to counsel them on the fact that we are managing their listing versus just putting them on the market and calling them in two months, which is what a lot of times happens. Right. And then the last slide is a roadmap. So a lot of my sellers have never sold before or they sold 20 years ago. So they mm. don't know what's going on. So it's a quick visual. So everything's branded. Everything's our colors. It's very simple, but mm. it, it's things that I can talk about very quickly. And mm. it just really answers questions that they didn't even know they had. And yeah. it sets this tone that I'm the authority. So I don't walk in and, and, and say, Hey, what do y'all want to talk about? What do you think your home's worth? No, no, no. Yeah. We don't know. Mm. I go through and assess value. We sit down. I ask them what's concerning them, but I don't answer any of their questions. Mm -hmm. I let them talk right. and I write it down because I know the majority of the questions they have, I'm going to answer in this presentation. Right, and if right. not, then we're going to talk about it later. But if I start answering all these one-off questions, we're never going to get them in to what we need to talk about. Great advice. going to feed the rest of everything else. Right? Guess, that's Don't get sidetracked with these random questions. Yeah. Great. Otherwise you'll get sidetracked with the dog question that I don't want to move twice question, all this stuff. And then you're answering yeah. it. I want to answer the, I want to get all their questions and concerns out of their head before I start mm -hmm. talking to them. Cause otherwise they're not going to listen to me. What's your right? language for that? You say, Hey, I'm just going to write all these down and we'll cover it during the presentation. Is yeah. I just sit down and yeah. say, Hey guys, this meeting is all about you. What's yeah. concerning you? What's on your yeah. mind? And Love they it. just start talking. And mm. they just start talking. I'm like, great. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Great. Perfect. It's just like the doctor. I'm the Love doctor it. diagnosing him, trying to figure mm -hmm. it out, but the doctor's not going to tell him what's wrong right away. Right. right. So right. I want to, I know, I want to know what's worrying them. I want to know what mm -hmm. their situation is because the wife's going to have one issue, which is usually 
what do I do to get the house ready? Yeah. And then the husband's thinking about something else. Like, what are we going to net on the house? And so right. we're going to talk about all that. Great. These are normal, right? And if mm -hmm. there's other stuff that I'm not, that's not normal, then we write that down and talk about that. So then I do my little listing presentation. I'll tell you something. If you decide to go straight to value mm -hmm. and you haven't built your validity with the client and they don't agree with your value, they will not trust you. Right. Okay. And once in a You're while done. I'll get, I'll get lazy or not lazy, but like I'll have a client that the listing appointment is made, going to be make or break by the dollar, the value. Cause they are either super tight or they won't move. Mm -hmm. But once in a while I'll go, I'll, I'll lead with value and, and show them that part first. Yeah. And if I tell them what they don't want to hear, they do, they hear nothing else for the rest of the conversation. They're only thinking about price. And they now have no idea if I know what I'm talking about because right. I've not then gone through a presentation to show them I'm prepared. Mm -hmm. I have a mark, you know, that builds validity as every slide you go through build mm -hmm. just like a doctor. If they're going through stuff on a board, even if they're not saying, I know what I'm saying, the fact that they have the knowledge to explain to you what this part does versus that is yep. subconsciously building value in your mind. Cause you're like, Oh, I didn't know that. So they must it's credibility. You're building credibility, exactly. credibility, credibility. So my biggest so, piece of advice is, is don't get lazy. Yeah. Still go, even, and that's why I still do it with past clients. Cause with past mm. clients, it's really easy to get familiar. It's easy right. to get a little bit more casual and they mm. still need to understand that you're the expert and you know what you're doing. Love it. So, but back to the DocuSign question. So you, yeah. you got through your PowerPoint and yep. then how, how do they sign? Great. So basically, um, I have my laptop. So mm -hmm. when we go through comps and stuff, what I do is I give them my iPad and I say, look, mm -hmm. everything you're going to see, I'm going to see on my laptop, but you guys hold this because it's, it's easier. That way I'm not sitting over there two feet apart from them. Right. Yeah. So they have the iPad. They're looking at it on everything. When it gets to the signing part, everything is done on the laptop. And then I physically take my laptop to them. Mm, and I okay. say, okay, it's time for Mark. It's time for you to sign. These are the key points of the things you're going to sign. You know, the listing is going active on this day, unless we need to change it. Just call me list price is set at this. Um, you know, these are the exclusions you guys have noted. The biggest thing in the contract everyone asked me is what if we change our mind? And I just explained in our current listing agreement, we have what's called an easy exit clause. Mm. We've already done staging and photos. We just ask that you reimburse us X amount. That's your biggest risk. If you want to read the fine print, feel free, or you're going to need a copy whenever you guys have both signed and it's completed. They yeah. just sign, sign, sign. And I just instruct them, Hey, click the yellow button. And they, does it, did I spell your name correctly? You know, that kind of thing. And they right. sign. And then literally it, if there's if it's a two person signer, mm -hmm. it literally will say, okay, great. And the computer back to Stephanie and then I'll re-log in or whatever. And the next person signs and they're done. Nice. So nice. literally I so am clean. taking the laptop to them. Mm -hmm. um, I prefer that personally over sending docs because when mm -hmm. you send docs, a lot of times you'll have one spouse that's super detail oriented and the other one that's not. And even yeah. though they're not usually asking me a ton of questions at that point, even if I'm mm -hmm. sitting there, me yeah. sitting there, I think helps facilitate the process, not to mm -hmm. rush them, but they just feel more comfortable versus them feeling like they have to figure it out themselves. If I just send it to them. Plus yeah. to be honest, I want them to get that sign. So then right. my team can start their file and everything can start moving. If they take four days to sign it, I just don't like those loose ends not being tied up, frankly. No, no, so I 99% of the time, the only time it doesn't happen that way is if they don't know that they're going to move forward and I leave and mm -hmm. they like, I just had this happen last week. I left. They called me two weeks later because they had some things they wanted to talk through. They decided to move forward. And sometimes I'll go back out a second time and have a face-to-face -face mm -hmm. meeting with mm -hmm. COVID. We're trying to limit that. So sure. I'm not, so I am just sending them docs, but I was there. I had a phone call with them and just said, Hey, is there anything you guys want to talk about? If not great sign, 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 they're done. Let me ask you a question about process real quick with COVID. Yeah. Um, are, what percentage of your appointments, listing appointments are like what we're doing right now, Zoom versus mm -hmm. in person? So since March, I would say 95% are Zoom. Really? Wow. Yep. Are you yep. listing completely virtually then? You have to go to the yep. house. Wow. Mm -hmm. No, you just do it virtually. Wow. Mm -hmm. Love it. So there's, there's a straw, a process. So I do the same research process ahead of time. Mm -hmm. I will have them take photos of the front, the back main areas of the home. Mm -hmm. I do ask specific questions like what is your house back up to? Because those are key indicators that will change the value. I'll ask them on a scale of one to 10. How do you rate your home? If they mm -hmm. say a seven, I'll say what well, great, what would make it a 10? Um, and, and I'll ask Good other question. questions because I'm going to, I mean, there's going to be condition items that you can't see, 
Um, but a lot of times the sellers are going to, are going to tell you cause they want you to be honest with them about value. Sure. And frankly, I'm um, today, I just had another one go under contract, but everything I've listed since COVID has sold. I just have one home active right now. It wow. went active last week. So everything has sold, sold. values haven't been off. Mm -hmm. Um, it's been fine. Now my stager is going out and she's going out physically and meeting with them. But for the listing appointment we, have, and, and I, I still offer it like in the heart and the surge of code, the first surge, it, everyone was just doing virtual. Then yeah. in, at least in Dallas, we started seeing, okay. Um, and we're considered essential. So technically we can meet with them if, we, if sure. they wanted me to, sure. yeah. I've always given them the option. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty okay with meeting people if they want me to. Most yeah. people are preferring the zoom. So yeah. yeah. So with, um, with that zoom meeting, my, my questions are, do you have, you have a staging person. Do you pay for the stage or do you not pay for the stager? We do. And, and yeah. our, the way our package works is our staging and our professional photography is included. Yep. Okay. So you're not charging back to the client. Correct. Uh, and does the photography include videography? No. And we talked about that when COVID started, if we mm -hmm. wanted to include video tours, I had included videos. I had included video tours previously, like a few mm -hmm. years back. Yeah. And, and we would look at the numbers and the amount of views the videos were getting. And frankly, it was really low. Oh. So we opted to not do video tours because what happens is unless the bedrooms are really big, a lot of times the video tour looks really wonky and it can yeah. skew it the rooms a lot of times because mm -hmm. we were thinking, Hey, maybe we need to do video walkthroughs of the home for right. COVID. Yeah. But what I can also tell you is a hundred percent of the buyers that have bought have viewed the home in person. Wow. Okay. They, so they, nobody's they, the buyers the aren't going. correct. And we yeah. were wondering if that was going to be the case. Yeah. We have not seen that be the case as of yet. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Yep. So with your systems, um, is with the zaps did you learn all that stuff yourself or do you have a technologist that's helping you or did you just dive in and yeah into you see these wrinkles and gray hairs yeah i'll never yeah, get back that 18 months of my life <laughs> but what i told my husband because i was literally staying up till 3 and 4 a.m in the morning like consistently learning the technology yeah. and he's like why are you doing this i'm like because because I was on a team and I'm still on a team. So basically what happens is you start building this stuff and the team uses it. But if you move on, they kind of keep it, you know, right. I said, because nobody will ever be able to take this knowledge away from me. Like mm -hmm. I'm having to teach myself how to do this, but nobody can take it away. So, um, so yes, I was learning how to create triggers, which is in our world, an electronic form. Mm -hmm. And then basically going down the rabbit hole of, what's the best solution what's mm -hmm. the best one that makes sense for our business and it's cost effective right because there's yeah. you could get the best of the best but then do you really want to spend 500 dollars a month you know I mean there's a lot of things to weigh out yeah. there's a lot of testing and trying things and then it's based on that p point in time like that point mm -hmm. in time five years ago that was the best technology but sure. has it changed right? right so what i found is jot forms pretty stable we use that for a lot of our our intake forms because mm -hmm. What one thing I learned was when you when you read about technology and workflows, it all has to start with a trigger. Like something has to trigger the dom first domino to fall, right? Right. right. So you got to figure out what that is, and then build that into your system as a team or as an agent. Mm -hmm. So if you got if you're a one person show and yeah. you're trying to figure out, okay, well, how would I even start implementing this? You know, think about when you leave a listing appointment, or if you're a buyer's agent working with buyers. How, how are you getting information to your assistant yeah. that they need to do something that that file exists? Mm -hmm. That's your trick. That, that starts that process mentally. Yeah. And then it's like, you start to think, okay, well, what else would I like to happen? Well, I'd mm -hmm. love when I leave a listing for the seller, I just met with to get an email from me saying, Hey, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Right. right. Here yeah. are the next steps. I would love for, instead of me logging my data into my spreadsheet that I track everything, Cause yeah, you can use a CRM, but maybe you're not, or even if you are, I still like to watch my own stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I would love it to go to that automatically. So yeah. I don't have to come home and log for hours. Right. right. It does that. So there's a yeah. lot of things you can do. It's just thinking mentally about what you want that your business to look like. And it's evolving. I'm sure it's changing all the time. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you. Once you get to a certain point, I mean, I haven't touched the systems in about a year, so wow. it was a long, hard journey. Paul. 
Yeah. But now like I go to a listing, I, my team, and then they get an email from my team by the next day at 9am introducing them. Like it's a whole, yeah. If someone leaves or we have to change something, we just go in and change templates, mm -hmm. but it's just like anything else. Once you build the foundation, you just, you can add it and tweak it, but you don't have to rebuild it every year. Yeah. It's like the, it's like building it is the hard part, but once you built it, it's saving you so much time. That, that's where it's worth. Exactly. It, right? yeah. And the thing is you want to build the leverage of time. Like my goal right. is, I mean, whether I do five listings a month or 30, like I want to have as much time to back to myself as I can while yeah. being as the most, the most efficient. And my just, team loves it because they don't have to read my handwriting anymore. Love it. Yeah. One of my coaches told me recently, you can't, you got to start trading, uh, trading tr uh, time for money. And that's yes. the biggest trap we all do. When we, right. when you trade time for money, that's where you, your, your per hour uh, value goes way down. You and the problem in real leverage. estate, right. And the problem in real estate, a lot of times starting out at least is people have more time. They do money. Exactly. Right. And yeah. then they start to do everything themselves. They, and that's great. And there's a place for that. But if you want, that life. Growth. I mean, the reason you get into real estate is to have flexibility, more income potential, all that. Yeah. You've got to figure out a way to leverage it. And sometimes that is spending time on the business and time in the business. And I feel mm -hmm. like a lot of people spend time selling, but yeah. then they really don't know what to do in the business to kind of get their system set up to where if they do more volume, they're not handcuffed to the laptop or their phone. I'm just curious with, when you close with a client, um, how are you doing? How are you managing that like relationship after the fact? Like, do you have a, do you have a sphere that you're like managing, massaging these people for, for life or how's that work? Great question. So that was one of my biggest concerns and thoughts before I started my glam, the glam girl boss. Okay. Sure. And the reason I started the glam girl boss was because think about when you go buy a house or a car, mm -hmm. do you really care about interest rates or deals or things right. for the first one to three years? No. Yeah. So I kept thinking, okay, how am I going to stay in touch with people in a meaningful way without like, let's be honest, without sending them recipe cards and just right. kind of the stuff that I Boring feel like stuff. is a little old school, right? It's yeah. just not really effective. Mm -hmm. People I feel like want to connect with you, right? As a human yeah. to human, they want to see you on social. They want to know what your dog's names are. They want to know what you <laughs> like to do on vacation. So yeah. I started I created a blog called the glam girl boss and it's like a lifestyle blog. So a lot of my female clients will find it or they'll see me on social and it's a way for I've got clients that follow my keto journey or they follow, you know, the fact that I have four dogs and I'm a crazy dog mom, but they <laughs> remember that versus 80% of people say they will use their agent again. And 11% mm -hmm. of people do. Right. And it's not because they don't like their agent. It's because right. when their life changed and their situation changed and they needed a to buy a different home or sell. They just were around that new group of people because we all kind of come and go in each other's you lives. Phase in, phase out. Yeah. And so what I do is I'm pretty active on social. I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. Like I had a guy three months ago that I hadn't worked with in five years, four years, reach out and say, Hey Steph, we need to sell our house. You know, I follow you on LinkedIn. I send all my reps to you, your page for branding, but like we need, like, I didn't have to have an active, I'm going to send them a Christmas card and I'm going to send them a Thanksgiving card and I'm going to send them this. Like I was naturally showing up in the, in the places that they were as people. Mm -hmm. And then I was constantly talking about what I was doing in real estate. I was mixing in parts of my personality because again, they don't care about interest rates when they just buy a house. They don't care about right. the hottest new neighborhood if they love where they live. So I feel like you've got to you've got to talk about what you're doing, but in a way where the people that have bought from you are going to still be interested versus just, okay, set it and forget it. I'm going to send them a recipe car. I'm going to, you know, yeah, that kind of stuff. So, so I, when, I use social a lot. So social. So you, when you uh, start interacting with somebody, you do you immediately friend them, follow them, connect with them on LinkedIn. Is that, or do you, a lot how of do you times handle I, I can't, I will connect with them on LinkedIn. A lot of times I'll wait till after they close just because yeah you know, I'll let them organically find me as well, but sure. I don't do a lot of being just super proactive and stocky because I just find that sometimes, sometimes it can get weird. Like I have thought about like, okay, let's say you have someone's house for sale and they're kind of nervous and they go see you on vacation. Like, yeah, are they, what are they thinking? Right. right. And so I'm kind of careful about who I seek out proactively before they close. If they want to friend me on Facebook, great. Um, mm -hmm. LinkedIn's great. Um, I do think that's a great tool because it's more on the professional level, but sure. normally the people that want to find you on Instagram or Facebook will just by nature. 
Mm -hmm. And so is that a part of your system that after close, after close, you do, you do friend them? I honestly, I don't, I don't you have don't. a system per se where I go they and seek find, them out. They find you. Yeah. Yeah. Like okay. usually what I do is I have a system when they close, we have a specific job form that we close them out. They mm -hmm. go to my spreadsheet. I do put them on an email list. So I have access to their email. So if I do want to send out some kind of seasonal email or some kind of other notification, I can, mm -hmm. and then I can send them something um, via mail. Ideally, I guess I could load them into LinkedIn or into Facebook and friend them, but I yeah, don't per se don't right now. So let's go into branding because you are a branding yeah. expert and I want to get into the branding side of it with you. So when did you, or maybe you've done this your whole career, when did you embrace branding and what does that mean for you? What does it mean for yeah. your clients? So I would say like back in 2011, I worked for a really big technology company and mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I was a client rep and I was covering Minnesota, which was, you know, five states north, six states north of me, and I'm in Dallas. And I'm reaching out to these technology people and they're like, great, you're our third client rep this year. And it's like, oh geez, how am I going to connect with these people, right? Yeah. So, and this is back in the day, right? Like, I think our phones still only called people. They didn't even text people. Wow. Um, so this is back in the day, right? So right. back then, I literally went in my formal dining room against the wall. And I had my husband take a picture of me and I used that picture as my LinkedIn profile. I used it as my email signature. And I don't even know if we had Facebook pages back then. So when I put that on my email signature, people were like, what are you doing? This is it <laughs> like you're, this is not real estate, Stephanie. This is not a glamor shot. And I was like, well, I'm reaching out to people that have no idea who I, am. So mm -hmm. I, I believe in putting a face to a name, right? So I had the same picture on my email signature that I did in my LinkedIn profile. And what I would do is I would have a strategy where I would connect with, try to connect with them on LinkedIn. Right. And, and technology is way worse than real estate. Like these people do not want to talk to you unless they have yeah. to. Right. So I'm reaching out to them on LinkedIn. I'm sending them an email. It's the same photo made some progress. Right. So I go yeah. to my manager one day. And I said, Hey, cause we would take business trips up to these cities and meet with the clients in person. But sure. the majority of the business was done here, uh, you know, different States. So I went and sat in his office one day and he's like, okay, so we're talking about the business trip and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, so I have 15 appointments scheduled for next week. And I just wow. kept talking about my process and blah, blah, blah. And he's, he's like, what? And I'm like, what do you mean? What, 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 what? He's like, wait, you, how many appointments do you have? And I'm like 15. And he goes, and, and I had like, I don't know maybe a hundred accounts and they were small accounts and I'm selling right. to this really big IT company. So it was really hard to match up services and products that work. He's like, how'd you get that many appointments? And I'm like, well, I have to have a certain amount of appointments to go for you guys to pay for me to have a business trip. Right. And he, and most of the reps were maybe meeting with four clients. Wow. And I was like, so I didn't know it was a big deal. Well, apparently what I found was they were putting a face to a name with the LinkedIn messaging. They were mm -hmm. putting a face to a name with the email. Then I was saying, Hey, I'm coming up to see you. This is when I can meet blah, blah, blah. So sure. I realized how much branding, what a big deal that was back then. And I was kind of like, even though it was an IT company, it was still kind of foreign to their process of using Back then it was like, why would I want to be on LinkedIn if I'm not looking for a job? Why right. do I want to be on Twitter if I don't want to post what I had for lunch? Like literally I was teaching a class on why you need to be on Twitter and LinkedIn as a professional. Mm -hmm. And they were like, mm -hmm. why would I want to do that? So we were breaking down those barriers back then. So sure. branding to me has always been about building your authority, building who you are because and with being digital now, honestly, it's just, it's the same thing as you would, you would do face to face, but if you don't have an online brand, it's almost like a company not having a website. What do you yeah. think if you look up a company and there's no website? Right, right. What is your impression of them? Yeah, zero. That they're just, they're not legit, they're not right? They yeah, must yeah. be super Black mom hole. and pop. Like, right. like, yeah. So I look at it and say, okay, I mean, Jeff Bezos says, says your personal brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. So what mm -hmm. do people say Love about it. you, right? Yeah. But mm -hmm. you have to build that authority online because if I'm working behind my computer all day, like I, I know I can come across sometimes people could probably accuse me of being arrogant or braggadocious when I say, Oh yeah, I listed 141 homes. Sure. You could say that, but guess what? If I'm a heart surgeon and I tell you that I've done 141 heart surgeries as a client, you feel really darn good about that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Because you want to go to somebody like the home is one of pe people's biggest assets. So mm -hmm. I want to go to someone that's going to take care of me that has experience 
Because like we said, unfortunately in our line of work, you go take a state, te- a, te- a license exam with the state and you're now an agent and you right. can go print business cards. And now you have the ability to go to the, sell the biggest asset for somebody to, in their entire life. Yeah. And so I believe that at the risk of people thinking I'm either arrogant or braggadocious, that I'm going to connect with people that want someone that does this for a living, that values the experience that I have. I have a YouTube channel where I am, I happily give away listing answers that will either help agents and or sellers because as agents, unfortunately, you don't know a lot of this stuff until you do it. So I'm trying to help agents that maybe, because maybe they're working with four buyers a month and one listing. Well, I've taken over 400 listings in my career, right? So Mm -hmm. you look at it and go, I've learned a lot that I'm happy to teach because you're not going to learn all that if you're just listing 12, 15 homes a year. And the average agent sells what, three to five homes a year. Right. Um, so so from that standpoint, I think building a personal brand is super important because if you're not, other people will be and you will get passed over. That's just, it's just survival of the fittest in my opinion. Let's talk about like nuts and bolts, nitty gritty. What do you, what does that mean for you in terms of, are you having, cause you see a lot of what we call quote unquote influencers on Instagram, just a yep. lot of my pretty shots, yeah. you know, and, and you can see they're building audiences. So there's, there's some level of people that want that, I guess. But what does that mean for you specifically? What are you, what are you posting yeah. and how are you building your brand? Great question. So I started out thinking I wanted to be the fashion influencer. No right. joke. That's what I thought I wanted to do. A boutique reached out to me and actually I did that for a while. And I told my husband, this is the best thing that happened to me. Cause I know I don't want to do this anymore. He's like, why? I go, because it's not providing enough value for me. Not saying there's anything wrong with it, but for me in it, I'm a six figure a year career driven woman. I want to create, I want to do what I do well and create value for people. So I said, you know, I want to build a brand. Yes. I want to create the pretty images because let's be real. That's what people like on Instagram, right? That's what you got to have it all. You got to have the pretty pictures. You've got to have a good caption. You've got to have something that interests them, hooks Mm -hmm. them, a call to action. So what I try to do is, is mix, mix my work stuff with the personal stuff, which for some people is really uncomfortable because they've been told for so long, personal is personal and professional is professional. Guess what? I think we're seeing a shift where Mm -hmm. people want to buy and do business with those they know, like, and trust. The Mm -hmm. only way they're going to get to know, like, and trust you is if they know who you are as a person. And the studies have shown, I don't have the statistics in front of me, but studies have shown that people are going to be, are more willing to do business with people than companies, which is why I'm a big proponent for these big companies that are like trying to control their employees and Mm -hmm. their image that they project. Let them have an Instagram and talk about the company. Let Mm -hmm. them have a LinkedIn and talk about the products because think about Amazon. Am I going to trust an Amazon review from the company or from other reviewers like me that are using it for the same purposes? all day long, people like me. So the type of content I post is mixed. So I go between, so there's ways, there's different things. You can tell your story. You can talk about why you got into real estate. You can educate your clients. So think about the top, an easy way to start is think about the top 10 things that people ask you all the time. Yeah. And write them down and record them. Um, your awards. Now, granted, could you, could the wrong person say that you're bragging? Sure. But you know what? There's going to be as many of the people that are going to say you're bragging as go, Oh, wow. I had no idea. Like how infuriating is it when your friends list a house with somebody else because they didn't know you were a realtor because you're too afraid to tell them you're good at what you do, or this is Mm -hmm. what you do. right? Right. Right. Don't spam them on Facebook, but work it in. Hey, Mm -hmm. about to go on a morning run because I've got evening appointments tonight. What are y'all doing for your runs? It's there's ways you can, and I'm not the best at it. I've had to work at it because I'm a very direct person. I'm not Mm -hmm. good at like this, play this game of trying to like, I I'm like, Hey, I have listing appointments tonight. Like who want, I mean, who wants to sell? Like I'm all about being direct, (laughs) but that's not how people respond. So I've had to learn how to, Hey, you know, I'm on a walk with the dogs, getting them work exercise because I'm going to be gone because I've got to drive an hour for my next listing appointment, right? Right. Whatever. So it's, it's, I feel like it's a combination of your expertise, why you do what you do, your client stories, I think is huge. So Mm, I love, love, like, I'm a, there's two schools of thought. 
You'll hear some people totally bash the just listed, just sold approach because they're like, mm-hmm. you're just bragging that you just got paid. And I'm like, well, if you frame it up the right way, you're actually advertising an area that you service. So people that are living in that area know that you work that area. Right. And you're also telling your client's story. So I've got tons of clients that were so scared of selling during COVID. I'm selling most of their houses in less than two weeks. So yeah, right. I'm going to tell their story because one, it's an accomplishment. And two, it's helping other people that think they can't sell right now that absolutely you can. Love it. So let's talk about nitty gritty. Uh, do you have, do you have a posting pattern? Are you posting so much a day or is it organic? Like I'm going to, Hey, I'm doing this and so I should post it or is it like, no, Great I got to hit it. I got to so, hit two or three posts a day. Yeah. So a couple of things. So there's this concept of macro versus micro content. Okay. And if you only operate with micro content, my belief is you will always feel like you're chasing your tail as a content creator. And if you're a business owner, which we all are, even if you're an employee, you are now business owner of your personal brand. You will always feel like you're chasing your tail. So let me explain. Macro content would be a podcast, a blog, a YouTube channel. Okay. Or even a video series if you do live streaming, okay? okay? And then you take those concepts and you break them down. So let's say I have a podcast episode about personal branding, right? We talk about three main things. And then I can take content from that episode and break it down into micro posts. So I look at it and it's been a journey for me as well because my thought was I have to post on Instagram every single day. Okay. Well, there's a difference between Instagram likes and follows and actual business. So in Mm -hmm. my mind, there's, there's the vanity metrics, which yes, you, you want to have above a certain amount of followers because you want to have validity. You want to try to get the swipe up feature. You want to be there, but that doesn't guarantee that you're going to get any business. Okay. So you've got to, I feel like you have to have an approach where you lead with value driven content. So I have my, the Glam Life Real Estate Podcast, which is all about delivering content, value-driven content to my audience. Then I take those concepts and I break them down into smaller posts for my Instagram, for my LinkedIn, for my Facebook. I use a tool. I'll give you guys a secret. I use a tool called CoSchedule. It is a paid tool, but it'll change your life. (laughs) I've worked with Hootsuite before. There's Buffer. There's all these other ones. I like co-schedule and for my Instagram, I like later. Later will allow me to pre-build my Instagram and my Instagram stories, but I still post them manually. I do not do auto post. I, mm-hmm. I, I still like to post those manually. But what I do is when I have a, a podcast episode come out, coast, and I basically link my podcast to my blog. So if you take, I do a podcast it goes to my YouTube channel. It goes to, it creates a blog post. I have a transcript and then CoSchedule will link to WordPress, but you don't have to do that, but you can go into CoSchedule and create a social campaign. So let me give you an example. Okay. I did this this morning. So last night I created some social media posts of success, property successes, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I need to get them out on LinkedIn and my Facebook page, but without annoying people. So right. I got into CoSchedule, started a social campaign, have a picture, have a caption for LinkedIn, and I create the same thing for Facebook page, but I have them going at different days, different times, and it will auto schedule all that for me. Love it. Does the same thing with my blog post. So give you an example. When your podcast episode comes out on the Glam Life of Real Estate podcast, what's going to yep. happen is you have about a three week schedule that mm-hmm. I've already built that is a template that you're going to be advertised, you're going to be um, talked about on LinkedIn on certain days and mm-hmm. certain graphics. You're going to be talked about on the Facebook Insiders page on certain days and certain graphics. I'm going to evergreen you, which means it doesn't matter what we talked about on the podcast. It's not just, it's not like fashion where it's only in for that day, right? Yeah, yeah. Your, your stuff is going to live. And that's the other beauty of, this is a long answer, but that's the other beauty of it value driven content. It's evergreen. It's not about interest rates and what the market's doing today. Now, granted Mm -hmm. that is valuable, right? But in two weeks, it's out of date. The beauty about value driven content is the way I tell you to stage your home today isn't going to change next year. The tips I give you on showing your home with animals is not going to change next year. So when you create value driven content and you have a tool that will categorize it or your own scheduling or whatever, guess what? That stuff's going to go out next year. 
So when I walk in a room and people come up to me and go, I see you freaking everywhere. That's by design. It's taking right. time and energy because you got to create enough content to get it out there. And then there's a concept where it, you can label it evergreen and then it knows to push it out to certain places, certain amount of times of year to where it, it's not seasonal. So then your episode will live, not just past the week we do it, which is right. so profound in my opinion, when you're talking about creating content as a business owner, because let's mm -hmm. be real, nobody feels like they have the time to do it. No. So if you can create it in a manner where you can use it again and again and again, Beautiful. more power to you. Love it. Love so it. do I have a posting schedule? Do I post on Instagram every single day? No, no. I used to try to, but mm -hmm. that's not necessary for my business to, to thrive. What yeah. I do require though is it's professional photos. So I do have professional photos shot of me probably once every two months, mm -hmm. partially because I love it and I yeah. love, you know, the different branding and all that. And it's just, you don't have to, you could do one photo. I think you need to do a professional photo shoot probably once a year because people yeah. want to see you other than just a headshot right. and it's doing things you like. My Instagram aesthetic is very, um, curated, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning that I'm very intentional about what I put on there. Stories have fun. Stories, yeah. I show up with no makeup on all the time. I show up with my dogs. I show up on my day off. That's the real, real. More people are in stories than they are the actual feed nowadays. But yeah. the feed is there, again, to show the brand, to show what you're up to in a more curated fashion. But people are loving the feed. Oh, I'm sorry, the I, stories. I, I kind of look at, um, you know, the Facebook feeds and Instagram feed is almost like your old school website. Exactly. And the exactly. stories have become the actual social media exactly because that's actually what's happening right i mean i think exactly. that's kind of what's happening but that's really interesting I totally so agree. so co-schedule use with linkedin and facebook later for uh is it the same concept but for instagram yeah so later is really cool because i mean instagram is so visual some people want to create a specific look with their feed yeah. I don't, as long as the picture looks good, I don't care what was before or after it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some people do, they want to create the same color scheme later provides a preview of your Instagram feed based uh, on how you're scheduling your photos. Uh, and you can also upload media to later to where like I might have 300 photos and I've coded like this section dogs, this section work, this section. So my branding categories, I'm trying to rotate through workout and health through, um, coffee time through dog mom stuff through work stuff because people don't let's be real they don't want to just hear about me listing real estate and i don't want to talk about real estate all the time right. i want to talk like last night i was on there at midnight talking about how i was making a pumpkin recipe for my dogs because i feel like they don't are probably allergic to peanut butter i have this pumpkin because someone's had an upset stomach this new recipe right so right. i'll do stuff about dog stuff and i'll have more people comment about that than my freaking real estate but <laughs> of I'm top of mind in real estate when they're looking for their agent, right? right because right. I've, I'm talking about other things that is important to them. Um, but they wouldn't know I did that stuff. If I, if I, you have to kind of put yourself out there and you can't worry about it. I don't worry about how many people view my story. I don't worry about how many people like it. Cause even if it's just one person that was value to, that's a win. Cause yeah. it, again, that it has to be about the value versus what am I going to get a sell from it? Mm -hmm. When you drive down the road and see a Coca-Cola sign and mm -hmm. you go to the store and you see Coca-Cola in the cooler and you go uh, see the Super Bowl commercial, like what made you buy that can of Coke? You right. probably don't have a clue. And that's mm -hmm. with advertising. It's, it's the continual overlay of marketing, right? You, mm -hmm. you can't point to probably one thing that made you buy it, but you are were aware of the brand because of all these different memory points. So yeah. in my mind, it's important. Like that's why I created the podcast. I wanted to create value, but I also wanted to create another way for people to get to know me and see me building my authority in mainly real estate, but we incorporate other topics just like you are, but it helps build your authority. It helps build who you are and what you want people to think of when they think of you as a professional. I love it. I love it. So um, I know you have a branding quiz. Mm -hmm. And my question for you is, um, is this a quiz that people can take on your, your website? Yeah, or so they, okay, yeah, exactly. So you can go to the glamgirlboss.com forward slash branding quiz, or yeah. you can just go to the homepage and there's a section that says, what's your brand style. And it's just a fun, like some people branding's really new to them. So let's just take the example of a Keller Williams agent, right? Yeah. Or I work with a lot of builder partners. So like builder sells people that work for a builder that like, let's be real. They're locked into their logo, their color scheme. Sure. They don't really, 
you know, how do they brand themselves? What does that mean? Well, branding is personal. So Mm -hmm. I may like gold and marble and that glam look and somebody else may be rustic or somebody else may be modern or minimal and they don't even really know it. So the branding, Mm -hmm. and this could be for guys too, but the brand style quiz is really just about what's your brand style that you want to focus on. It doesn't have to be about what your company logo is or what your broker logo and colors are. Cause a lot of people just default like Keller Williams agents. A lot of them, including myself for a while, just use the red, black and white and gray. There's nothing wrong with that, Mm -hmm. but okay. If you leave one day or if you just want to separate yourself from the other agents, what makes you unique? Like what's that memory point that when people think of you, it's like, Oh, that's the girl that wears cowboy boots. I don't, but I mean, I do, (laughs) but not for real estate, but like, or that's the girl that, you know, takes pictures with her dog for showings or whatever. So mm. it's a little quiz that you can just take. It's like seven questions. It's free. And it just helps kind of guide you on your brand style. Because one thing about branding is you want to be consistent. You can have multiple categories, yeah. but if you can create consistency within those categories, like let's give you an example. My color scheme, if you will, is like black, white, gold, bright pink, and leopard print. So when I go take my photo shoots, am I going to wear a royal blue top? I no. can, but I'm going to try to stay in my brand, kind of my area, because I know that it's going to be easier for me to use that with more things. So sure. if you start marketing yourself, if you use certain colors, if you like certain color schemes, it's going to just be more personal to you. And then you can carry that through into other things. So that's what they can take is this little brand personality test Love and then it. there'll be some goodies that they get in emails from me. I've got some branding podcast episodes that I link to so they can start learning more about branding. And then I'm working on right now and depending on when this episode airs, I'm working on some offers that they can purchase once they do take the quiz that can help them hone in on font selection, color selection. Cause, and I've got some flat lays too, that they want to use that in their, in their branding that they can have. I think that's awesome. That's something that, that topic of branding is undercovered in the industry. So I'm glad you are the one that's really leading that charge. And, and I think you, you do such a great job. I think people can learn a lot from you. You've well, I think a lot a of people lot of think that they have to have a designer and they don't. Yes, I mean, yeah. I mean, you don't have to be a designer. I'm not a designer at all. So anyway, sorry to interrupt. No, 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 no. Yeah. If you can do it by yourself and a lot of most agents are just single agents, you know, and you can get some tips. I think that's fantastic. So again, let's, let's just recap where everybody can find you is at the glamgirlboss.com so it does have a v at the front of it you could also google stephanie lindemood.com but everything the podcast the branding quiz all my real estate stuff is on the glamgirlboss.com if you search me on youtube under stephanie lindemood real estate there will be a playlist on my youtube channel if you have questions about the listing just listing frequently asked questions um, that's really a great resource for new agents or even agents that maybe haven't focused on listings that have some questions. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Stephanie. You've just given us a lot of information. I know everybody learned a lot. I learned a lot. I took pages of notes. Thank you so much for being with us today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.